everybody else finds me so they can get Debbie to do whatever. I so, like, when I was after, after different world, Debbie, Debbie came in. Oh, I didn't want to relieve anybody of their jobs and their, you know, ability to help let's solve this problem together. But it was a bit of uh, rearranging for them to understand who I really was. Debbie Allen, long hailed as one of Hollywood's top black actors, might not be the shining star we've all believed her to be. Rumor has it, at the ripe age of 74, that Debbie's got a darker side. Whispers suggest she's been blackballing fellow actors and playing gatekeeper in the industry. But before we dive into the scandal, let's rewind to the beginning. Debbie Allen is not only an actress, director, and choreographer, but back in 2021, she made history at the 73rd Emmy Awards as the first black woman to receive the Governor's Award for her storied acting and directing career. The Grey's Anatomy star was also honored for her continued commitment to inspiring marginalized youth through her various acting mentors programs and philanthropic work. Allen is best known for her portrayal of dance teacher Lydia Grant in the musical drama television series Fame. Now you may be hot stuff up in Harlem, or you may have the best tutu collection in the country. The multi-hyphenate also served as the series' principal choreographer during the show's tenure. Allen received a number of accolades for her stellar acting on the series, including a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress on a Television Series, along with two Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Choreography. Allen broke out into the TV world with her debut as Diana Buchanan, the fiancé to Jimmy Walker's J.J. character on the comedy series. Allen told TV Line during an interview that it was her first acting role in a major nighttime show. I had done Captain Kangaroo before that, but that was the first real primetime show that I did," Alan recalled to the outlet. It was a big deal all the way around. I was there visiting Ralph Carter, who had played my young brother Travis in Raisin, a musical version of Raisin in the Sun, and the casting woman saw me waiting. She said, oh, who are you? And I told her I was Debbie Allen. She said, can you act? I said, yes, ma'am. And then it all happened. Allen, who earned her degree at Howard University, said she modeled the show's concept after her experience attending the historically black institution. The star joined the cast of the show after season two and eventually jumped behind the camera to direct the Cosby Show spinoff. I had been brought in to take the show and make it culturally relevant, and that was something I knew about, she said. I went to Howard University so I knew what a historically black college ought to look like, smell like, feel like, taste like, and act like. Eventually, the show's powers that be wanted me to play the dean and I said, you know what, there's somebody better than me and I brought in Jennifer Lewis, and Jennifer Lewis was amazing as the dean, she added to TV Line. According to People, Allen has choreographed a number of performances for celebs like Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson, and the late Whitney Houston, among others. Last year, she was appointed to represent the United States as a cultural ambassador of dance. She's also choreographed the Oscars 10 times. In 2000, the former Broadway actress opened up the Debbie Allen Dance Academy as a way to bring dance and theater arts to marginalized students. The school services over 3,000 participants each year and offers a number of scholarships to pursue Perspective students. A part of Allen's mission is to serve disenfranchised Black and Latino communities while also designing classes for seniors, cancer patients, and women and children who have experienced domestic AB. However, it appears that behind the curtains Debbie Allen is a totally different person than who she portrays herself to be. Debbie recently found herself embroiled in a storm of allegations, with whispers of S impropriety casting a shadow over her esteemed career. At the heart of these claims lies a disturbing narrative of exploitation and abuse of power, as accusations surface suggesting that Allen leveraged her influence to solicit as favors from actors in exchange for roles in her films. During her tenure on the hit television series A Different World, Allen's conduct behind the scenes allegedly raised eyebrows among cast and crew members. Rumors began to circulate, hinting at a culture of coercion and manipulation, wherein Allen purportedly demanded S favors from actors in order to secure or maintain their roles on the show. One of the most troubling aspects of these claims is the suggestion that Allen preyed upon vulnerable individuals, exploiting their dreams and aspirations in pursuit of her own personal gain. The imbalance of power inherent in the actor-director relationship is exacerbated by the added pressure of securing employment in a highly competitive field. For aspiring performers, the prospect of acquiescing to Allen's demands may have seemed like a necessary sacrifice in the pursuit of their dreams, further perpetuating a cycle of exploitation and abuse.
Moreover, reports have emerged suggesting that Allen may have engaged in inappropriate behavior during the production of A Different World and other projects under her direction. Allegations of unwelcome advances and quid pro quo arrangements have called into question Allen's professional conduct and moral character. Among the most salacious claims are those regarding Allen's alleged relationships with cast members like Jasmine Guy. Apparently, Jasmine was a regular on Debbie's couch. The two were allegedly intimate. Now, Jasmine Guy was the main character on the show, and everybody loved her character. But this is what they're saying about her. And remember, back in the day, a lot of these people were really young. Like nowadays on the show Euphoria, you got people that are 23, 24 playing 16-year-olds. But back then, you had people that were young playing older characters. And and Hollywood didn't have as many stipulations and things in place like they do now. So let's continue with this. Jasmine was born in 62, so 1962. In 1979, she would have been 17, and at 17, she moved to New York City to study dance. Now, that's not something uncommon back in the late 70s and early 80s. So Debbie was allegedly exploiting Jasmine when she was still young. There have also been other allegations by one of the former producers who gave hints in a Tad Mumford interview about Debbie doing unnecessary S shots of college-aged women. Whitney, played by Jasmine Guy, panning the camera up through her thighs and crotch. Anyway, another allegation was that Debbie said that H, which is Halle Berry, gave her better neck than Debbie's husband Norman Nixon. While she has vehemently denied these claims, dismissing them as baseless rumors, the weight of evidence suggests a pattern of behavior that cannot be easily dismissed. In fact, fans actually believe there might be some truth to these allegations. Totally true, according to my friend's daughter. She worked as a PA on Different World when she was a college sophomore in the mid-80s. She came home one weekend crying and told us what she had observed. We had her quit, got her a radio internship. Thank God she was beautiful and brown-skinned and not her type. One fan commented, Additionally, there have been claims that Debbie allegedly fires actors for her own benefit. One former star of the U.S. medical drama, Loretta Devine, who played Adele Weber, joked on Entertainment Weekly's couch surfing about potential reasons for her character's exit from the show over 12 years ago. I got an Emmy for this show for Best Guest Spot and then they fired me right after that, she said. They kid me with that damn Alzheimer's. Divine went on to lightheartedly suggest that her co-star Debbie Allen was part of the reason for Rhyme's decision to K Adele off on the show. But I got fired from Grey's Anatomy, and then she became Jim Pickens' wife. And it apparently goes further than that. Divine pointed out a hilarious theory about Allen's involvement with shows she's worked on. When I was doing Dreamgirls, Debbie Allen came over, took over that, then I was gone, she laughed. Then she came over there to Grey's Anatomy, took over that, then I was gone. I was at the client list and they said Debbie Allen was coming in to direct, I got scared as hell! Regardless of those unfortunate omens, Divine insisted that she's still really happy working with Allen. Debbie's directed me in a million things. I've done her plays, she said. I love Debbie Allen, but the truth is the truth. In any case, it is rather paradoxical that Debbie Allen, who herself encountered rejection from gatekeepers in the industry from a young age, now holds the role of a gatekeeper. At the tender age of 12, Debbie Allen stood on the threshold of possibility, her heart filled with the dreams of a budding ballerina. Auditioning at the esteemed Houston Ballet Academy, she hoped to step into a world of pirouettes and plies. However, fate had a different plan in store. Despite pouring her soul into the audition, the doors of the academy remained firmly closed to her. Rejection stung like a bitter frost, threatening to extinguish the flickering flame of her aspirations. But Alan was not one to succumb to defeat easily. A year later, a serendipitous encounter altered the course of her destiny. A Russian instructor, perhaps guided by the whims of chance, stumbled upon Alan's performance in a show. Struck by her raw talent and undeniable passion, he extended a lifeline, advocating for her admission to the Academy. It was a twist of fate that would shape Alan's trajectory, offering her a second chance in a world that had once turned its back on her. The tale of Debbie Allen's perseverance doesn't end there. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes of rejection, she continued to soar, undeterred by the obstacles strewn in her path. At the age of 16, armed with unwavering determination, she set her sights on the North Carolina School of the Arts, another bastion of artistic excellence. Her audition was met with applause, her talent shining brightly in the eyes of those who bore witness. Yet, despite her undeniable prowess, the gates remained firmly shut. The verdict was delivered with a cruel finality. Her body, they claimed, was not suited for ballet. The sting of rejection cut deep, 
leaving wounds that threatened to erode her spirit. But Debbie Allen refused to be defined by the limitations imposed upon her. With each closed door, she resolved to carve out her own path, fueled by a tenacious spirit that refused to be extinguished. Rather than allowing setbacks to dim her light, she channeled her energy into pursuits beyond the confines of the dance studio. Turning her gaze towards academia, Allen immersed herself in the pursuit of knowledge, nurturing her intellect with the same fervor she once devoted to dance. It was a pivotal moment of reinvention, as she charted a new course towards the shores of possibility. With each passing day, her horizons expanded, her ambitions transcending the narrow confines of any single discipline. Yet the allure of the stage continued to beckon, a siren song that echoed in the chambers of her soul. Despite the wounds inflicted by rejection, Alan's love for performance remained undiminished. And so, with courage as her compass, she embarked on a new chapter, one that would see her blossom into a multifaceted artist of unparalleled skill and vision. Today, Debbie Allen stands as a gatekeeper in her own right, wielding influence and authority in an industry that once spurned her. But just like those before her, it seems she is determined to not open doors for any actor who might not agree to her demands. In any case, it's crucial to to recognize that none of these accusations against Debbie have been confirmed by the people involved, so they might not be true after all. And in Debbie's situation, her fans really hope that's the case. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.